The social media you engage in, the movies you watch, and even the political cartoons you see are seen by many diplomats and extremists as weapons of soft power in the war to win the hearts and minds of people. The modern world has actually made this question of soft power and culture even more significant because the rise of social media and the changes in the way the world operates from a global standpoint have distributed power around the world in individual groups and even among individuals in a way that we haven't seen uh, for many centuries. Internet activist Julian Assange was one of those individuals whose recent disclosure of classified documents was seen as a soft power attack on governments, spy agencies, and prying open the back door of diplomacy. With the WikiLeaks, the Tea Party moving, movement, etc., we're noticing that it makes it more difficult to do, let's say, closed-door diplomacy. Uh, it's also more difficult to do propaganda. Former Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff, who co-authored the Patriot Act, pointed to how a soft power cartoon provoked a nearly hard power use of deadly force. A classic example is those people who view American culture, movies and, and literature as imperialistic and uh, you know this is a big part of the, of the narrative of the Islamist extremists that American culture is degrading, it invades uh, you know the, the indigenous culture and the best proof of that is the amount of effort that the terrorists are putting into trying to kill the people who ran the cartoons in Denmark. Now, the cartoons are the softest of soft power, and yet that is viewed as a major gross breach of, of um, propriety by the extremists, and so they're willing to kill you for doing that. Chertoff also said that while trying to win the hearts and minds in Somalia, the U.S.'s failure to pull the trigger and use hard power gave Osama bin Laden the ability to use the soft power of the Internet to say the U.S. was weak. After the United States left Somalia uh, in the wake of that Black Hawk Down incident, uh, bin Laden uh, is supposed to have said to people, you see, this shows the Americans don't have uh, the will to fight. I would argue much of what happened in the years after uh, and much of the prestige bin Laden got was the belief that uh, the American, America was weak and was unwilling to do some very difficult things. But the soft power sword of social media and the Internet also took a swipe at al-Qaeda. Ayman Zawahiri, who is the number two in al-Qaeda, did a, um, an Internet town hall meeting. And in that meeting, uh, it, it came right after they had, uh, their affiliate in Algeria had exploded a bomb I think in front of the Algerian Supreme Court, and they killed a number of civilians, including a school bus full of ch children. And some of the people on the, on the um, uh, internet chat were very critical about the fact that Muslim school children had been killed, and why had Zawahiri done this? And when it comes to the war on terrorism in Afghanistan, the former Homeland Security chief said that President Obama and his predecessor, George Bush, agree on the use of soft and hard power. The administration's continued to uh, put troops into Afghanistan, which I think is a good thing. At the same time, um, the President and Secretary Clinton have spoken about the importance of engaging with Muslim communities around the world, and I think that's a good thing. Many senior diplomats have told me that in foreign policy, a lack of alternatives clarifies the mind. And when the only choice seems to be hard power, the use of soft power becomes very attractive. Frank Uciardo for CBS News, New York.